This episode of What the Tech is brought to you by Casper, an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the price because everyone deserves a great night's sleep. Get $50 off any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash Andrew and enter promo code Andrew at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. And by Hover. Find a domain name for your idea. Go to hover.com slash WTT and get 10% off your first purchase. Again, that's hover.com slash WTT. Hover, domain names for your ideas. Hey, everybody. Welcome to What the Tech. I'm Andrew Zan. Of course, I'm joined by the one, the only, Mr. Paul Therod. How you doing, Paul? Pretty good. How are you? Where Pretty are good. You? We, I am in a uh, on an undisclosed location right now. Is it the men's room at the Madison Square Garden? <laughs> I'm at the men's room at the garden right now, and that's where I'm doing the show <laughs> from. Uh, actually, we're doing a lot of construction at the house, and I'm, uh, I'm working in the city today. So I thought uh, this would be the best place to do a show. Out of all the places that I could possibly do it, this, the Madison Square Garden men's room would be the best place to do it. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, it seems secure. like I am having some bandwidth problems, too, so that's that's always fun. But I think it should clear up if you guys um, are watching this. Mm-hmm. Paul, uh, we do have a lot to talk about today. I saw you on Tuesday. Yeah, right. Um, first and we had a lot of while, fun. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First time in quite a while. Uh, we I got to play with some fun stuff that I'm not going to mention. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I also had a terrible issue with my new MacBook pro, my 15 inch MacBook (laughs) pro, which I want to, I want to talk about that because it was, um, I've never experienced anything like that. And it was a very fascinating experience. And you know what? Now I know why Apple has a unbelievable rating in consumer reports. Uh, well, I, I already know the reason, but please continue. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second, but before we do, we're going to take a minute and talk about our sponsor and that's hover the simple and fast way to buy a domain name. Now I've been buying domain names from hover for about four years now. Uh, they've been a sponsor of the show, but they're also my supplier of domain names. I have over 250 domain names, uh, just for myself. You know, I buy, I buy them essentially for every possible reason, uh, friends, birthdays, uh, if they don't own their domain name when kids are born, I have another kid on the way. When he's here, I'm going to buy the domain name. And this is a great way to invest on your property, for your business, for yourself. Uh, The great thing about Hover, over 400 400 domain extensions. Plus, you could connect with, uh, you could do email addresses and and everything else. You could start off with the .coms and the .nets. If you want a niche extension, you could do a .design or a .tech. Paul's favorite, .ninja, .horse, and .pizza. (laughs) Those are also available. (laughs) With Hover.com, and they have a great, great offer here. If you go to Hover.com, uh, Hover.com slash WTT, that's Hover.com slash WTT, you get 10% off your first purchase uh, when you purchase a domain name from Hover. Uh, I've been using Hover again for many, many years, and I probably will continue to do it because it is the easiest way to do it. No upsell like some of those other guys when you go to buy a domain name. You, uh, who is registry, uh, who is privacy is included, so you don't have to add another $10 to your domain purchase. Mm-hmm. Go to hover.com slash WTT, got 10% off your first purchase. Thank you, Hover, for supporting the show. So, Paul, um, mm. where should we begin? Should we talk about my Apple's issue? Yeah, yeah, I think so. So this was really interesting. Um, I have a 15-inch MacBook Pro, the brand new one. I could yep. actually show you guys here. So it's probably uh, perfect beautiful- right out of the box, I would imagine. Perfect, yeah. So do you see that touch bar? Look how pretty that is, Paul. <laughs> I didn't get that. Uh, okay, well, well, we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll talk about that, yeah, but yeah. Um, <laughs> so I got the 15 inch MacBook Pro, and it, I mean, I'll tell you, I've always had a 13 inch MacBook Pro until this one, and yeah. the 13 inch MacBook Pro is essentially useless for anything I'm ever going to do. It's I mean, very I, slow compared to, to be this. Honest, I, I I prefer the I prefer uh, I prefer the bigger one. You know, I, I so never I'm, did until I'm going to be interested to see how if you change your stance on this over time. You know. I've already I've already changed it because I would not be able to do what I'm doing right now with the 13 inch. It would be I mean, the fan would be at 100 percent. It'd be an absolute terrible, yep. terrible experience. And I never realized how terrible it is until I started yep. using this one. It's a real quad core. Right. Um, and right. this is something that is inherent throughout the entire PC market where 
the 13 inch versions of, you know, the, like the Dell XPS, let's say 13, you know, what is it? 14 or 13, the smaller one, uh, 13, yeah. that won't be a quad core i7. It'll yeah. be an i7, but it's not a quad core. It's a dual core. Well, by and the if way, you're doing, I mean, depending yeah. on which one you get it, it's even like a, it's like a Y series core M basically. Yeah. yeah, so. yeah. You're not getting, yeah, you're not getting the, the, the fastest version of those, but if yeah. you go with a, with a bigger model, uh, a bigger screen, a 15 inch, all across the board, you're probably going to get a quad core i7, which is what you really want when you're doing any kind of stuff that's a little heavy lifting. I never realized what a drastic difference it was. And listen, I, I know, but I didn't even realize it would be a drastic difference with well, Skype you, or Google Hangouts. You, it, it matters, right? I mean, I, you, you know, you're doing video work and stuff. I mean, I think for a typical, I'm using Office every day, sending email, browsing the web, it's not going to make too much of a difference. But honestly, for the stuff you do, yeah, I mean, I, I, that doesn't surprise me. No, big, 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 big difference. So yeah. I got the 15 inch and I've had a great time with it. And I plugged it in on Tuesday morning. It came on. It got very hot very quick. And then it just died. <laughs> uh, I I still do not know what killed it. Mm -hmm. I have never a theory. Will. And I probably won't ever know. But it was something with the power. It just, it just yeah. died. So I went to Apple and immediately they swapped it out. Right. No questions asked. Just so, let, let me, so Consumer Reports is calling. Uh, what do you think? Five stars? Is it possible to give them more than five stars? Oh, of course. Because the fact the that I just got so a good. completely non-working computer is not going to factor into the fact that the custom service was fantastic. But you know what? I'll tell you something. That it, it's a great example of that me working, right? Yeah. Oh, That's well, why they get yeah, the five stars. Uh, yes. because but, uh, also break. in glossing over the, the central issue, which is that when you go to an Apple store, most of the people in there are literally there waiting to get service. And even the people you see browsing around the store just have a later time. So they're just killing time. And that's been my experience universally. <laughs> so nobody's buying anything. Everybody's no, no, just no, people are absolutely buying there. everything and things. But, you know, the Apple store uh, experience is a lot like the checkout lane at the supermarket where they have like yeah. candy and, you know, magazines and stuff. And you make like an impulse buy, except that at an Apple store, an impulse buy is a thousand dollars. Three thousand dollars, you know, whatever. I mean, it's it's an incredible business, you know. And then everyone so, feels so good about themselves when they walk out there. They're like, oh, let's give them like huge marks for customer service. Let's ignore well, for the, the reason we're actually here, which is that my device actually doesn't work. So I have an That's idea amazing. as to why this is the case with this, right? So I went in there, and I've I've always said that I've had great experience whenever something doesn't work with 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 you know the iPhone. Like my wife has always had a problem with the speaker; it just stops working. Right. They will always just give her a new one. Yeah, Always. That's what no people, questions honestly, asked. Just, that's what people are looking for, right? I, I think the issue with customer service is that most people expect some kind of pushback, right? Like they're going to be like, oh, there's this little red dot inside the headphone jack that doesn't even exist anymore. That means you've got water on it. That's your fault. You know, like that's I, people are expecting to be held accountable for something that's not their fault. And I think when Apple doesn't do that, and I'm, by the way, I'm sure someone will come up with a story where they have done that, but whatever. I think for the most part, they really do have good customer service. Um, you know, they feel really good about the company, right? It's like, yeah, they may make this stuff that isn't as reliable as everyone thinks it is, but you know, at least, you know, they're really cool about giving me uh, a new one, you know? And it's well, like, well, here's yeah. the other problem. Here's the other, let's say I bought an HP, for example, right? Or let's say, let's say, let's say a Dell. Where would I buy this Dell from? Either Dell's website or I would get it, let's say at Best Buy, right? Yep. Or any any other computer store. I, I don't know. Let's let's use Best Buy as an example. A, a terrible example, but let, let's use Best Buy as an example. Essentially, everybody working in the Apple store is very familiar with the Apple brand. And it's very easy for them to troubleshoot something as far as, you know, they do they do the uh, support inside of the store and they, they swap it out inside of the store. And you could also buy it online. If you buy an HP or a Dell online, how is that return process, if it's, a, if, if it's faulty, going to work for you? You're going to either have to go, call them, and they're gonna, you're going to have to wait to get it back. They're going to try to fix it. It's a whole process. With Apple, they just tell uh, you to go to the store and yeah. get a new one. I know. No, it, it, it's, no it's, it's legitimately an advantage. It really is. Uh, yeah, and, that's what it is. Not that it's a better piece of hardware. I mean, in some cases, well, yeah, and we'll talk look, about yeah, that. No, but It almost doesn't matter. I mean, I, I think they make high-quality hardware. I'm not, I'm not actually suggesting that their stuff is buggy by and large. I don't mean it like that. But... Um, I, on the Microsoft side of the fence, I sort of rec recommend to people if they can, especially here in the United States, if they're near a Microsoft store, you know, buy it at the Microsoft store, um, because they'll get the, um, 
the, the Microsoft same kind of experience. experience. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, yeah. they will. I mean, I, my, the Microsoft yeah. Store is modeled after what Apple's doing. I mean, it's a way to, uh, you know, provide that kind of thing. So, but you're right. You, uh, you're right. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I, I, I have honestly had mostly good experiences bringing stuff to the Apple Store for repair, which I've had to do a lot. Um, the exception being that they have a hard time keeping appointments, you know, uh, yeah. like I'll, I've gone in at seven o'clock at night and they said, sorry, we're running behind. It's like the witching hour. And it's like, if it's the witching hour, don't tell me to come in now. You know, that yeah. you should know that this is the witching hour, if that's what you're going to call it. Or you have people it's like, like oh, yeah, totally cut the line. five stars. He was so nice. You know, I, I just, I have a, a problem with that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, by the way, I walked by the Fifth Avenue app, uh, Microsoft store also, because mm -hmm. they're both on Fifth Avenue. Um, right. Boy, what a difference in the amount of people in the store. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Big that's because difference. the uh, PCs don't have to be fixed as much, Andrew. <laughs> that's probably what it is. <laughs> so afterwards, I brought, you know, I was it was already getting late, and I decided to see you and, and meet up with you, um, which I, I met up with you, and, and Mary Jo was there, and a couple other people stopped by, which was a very good conversation. Um, what was your experience with this? Because you got, you got a couple minutes with this uh, Mac, and, you know, we had we had made fun of the keyboard, and we had made fun of the touch bar in the past, and the, the stupid... Uh, you know, whatever the the trackpad that's gigantic now. Yeah. So I want to get I want to get your input on this because you actually had some hands on time with us. Yeah. So when the when the I almost said the original when when the new MacBook first came out, which I think let's say was two years ago, I think in the spring sometime. Yeah, two years. Uh, that was the first time they used uh, that new type of keyboard, which they call I think they call the butterfly or they have butterfly keys or whatever the terminology they use is not to be confused with the old IBM butterfly thing effect. butterfly keyboard. Yeah. Butterfly effect, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like if, every time you hit a key, someone dies in Indonesia. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I don't mean like that. But um, that keyboard was terrible, right? And remember when that machine came out, that a lot of people figured this will be this will turn into the next MacBook Air. Like in other words, and by the way, it still might. Like I think a lot of people uh, think they're going to release a 13 or 14 inch version of it this year. And that becomes the MacBook Air, right? The thin, yeah. super light, you know, kind of um, ultra mobile computer. Okay, fine, whatever. Um, so, you know, I'm interested in, in hardware. I mean, I, I went to the Apple store to check it out. I was really curious. The screen's a little too small for me, whatever. Um, that that keyboard and that and the frictionless trackpad, right? Which um, uh, I've talked to a couple of guys from PC makers who have told me that the reason Apple went to that style of trackpad it wasn't because it's better technology or more modern or whatever. It's because literally the machine is so thin um, that they can't put battery in there otherwise. In fact, I don't think they can even put battery under the trackpad on a MacBook. Uh, I think regardless. it's on the sides, right? Yeah, I think it's actually around it because that, it's so thin. And yeah. so the, the problem with these two types of uh, hardware devices, the keyboard and the, and the trackpad, is that they require a range of motion, right, to work properly. And so... Apple has decided to emulate that expectation we have around both of them um, in different ways, right? And so I, the trackpad I find to be odd. I don't like it, but whatever. I mean, you know, who knows? It's a you little big. It's a little too big. Well, um, I, I, I'm talking about on the original MacBook. I mean, I, uh, oh, on the, the original design, now, like, I, in other I words, don't like that, it. Whatever that technology is called, you know, I find it to be a little off. Like, I don't, I don't think it feels natural. The, the keyboard on that original MacBook, not, I know it's not the original MacBook, but, the, you know, the one from two years ago, um, was terrible. It was unusable. And I don't understand how anyone uses this. And so if you flash forward a year uh, to about a year ago now, they came out with a second gen version of that. And I, and I guess it had, I think it had a slightly improved keyboard. I don't know about the trackpad. And then you flash forward to the machine you have. And now again, they've improved it yet again. And I, I had not tried a MacBook Pro until you, I saw it until I, I saw yours. And I have to say a um, couple of things on the negative side, that trackpad is humongous. It didn't seem to have a lot of palm rejection issues, so who cares? It's fine, right? As long as you can yeah. type on that thing and have it not move the mouse cursor around, which, by the way, has been a problem for me on that HP Spectre X360, the 15-inch version, which has a also a very wide trackpad, so my palms hit it on either side. Um, I find that to be very disruptive. So I didn't experience that with that device. I didn't do a lot of clicking with it. I, I don't have any opinion about the quality of that. But I will say, and I think this is, you know, 15 minutes later, what you were trying to get me to say <laughs> is I thought the typing experience was fine. You know, yeah, it's very, it very, it's good. very loud. 
Um, it is a very loud keyboard. In fact, I, uh, I'm astonished how loud it is. I don't want to betray. Actually, he might have said this publicly. So uh, I was at a review. Well, we don't have workshop. to. We don't have to. We don't have to name names. We could just say that someone. No, well, no, I. No, this is a different story. I mean, I, okay. I, I don't know if you were even privy to this. Um, okay. There was a guy at the reviewer event that I went to the other day who was a prominent reporter or reviewer from a mm -hmm. prominent tech publication who was tweeting about the asshole behind him whose keyboard was so loud it was all he could hear. And so, in other words, <laughs> there's someone sitting behind him and he's type, type, typing away and it's clack, 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 clack. Clack, 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 clack. Like it was like a like an old mechanical typewriter. So he turned around to see what it was, and it was a it was a MacBook. <laughs> so yeah, I, I was, was actually we were. So when we when we when I saw you, I took it out. I'm like, Paul, type on this thing, and you're like, Holy crap, it's loud! I go, Yeah. I don't know if you yeah. guys could hear it. Hold on, let me try if I could do this. Okay. It's amazingly loud. It's really loud. Yeah. Let me see if I could do this. I don't know if you could hear it. You hear that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Actually, you know what? I can give you some data on this, um, and this will be so ponderous it will only take forever. Um, I actually have the, me the the sound measurements on this thing. Oh, um, you do? Okay, excellent. Yeah. So I don't. Maybe you know how decibels work, right? If you go up yeah. in range, if you go up in decibels, like if you go from forty four to forty five, um, it's it's not one percent difference, right? It's some big percent difference. So the difference between 44 and 50 is actually really big, yeah. decibel-wise, if that makes sense. Um, so I know uh, I know from buying fans when I'm building a computer. So anything under 20 dB is kind of okay. Okay. So a ThinkPad X1 Yoga, which is an excellent keyboard, is um, 45 decibels when you're typing okay. away. Um, a MacBook that Pro, the one you have, is 51. Wow. Um, it's actually the highest noise level of any laptop sold today. <laughs> so I'm, curious as, to, really I'm curious as to what the previous uh, MacBook, generation MacBooks. Yeah. Uh, it's funny, um, you know, was. I've been kind of playing around with it, with keyboards since I experienced that. And I I, I would say even the, um, the HP Spectre X360 I've been using, the 15-inch version, actually, it's pretty loud um, for a keyboard. I don't have the X1 here with me anymore to test that to see if, how they compare. And I don't have a way to measure this here. But I want to say, based on the information I see in front of me, which I can't discuss yet, um, the HP is probably in the 44 to 45 decibel range. Mm -hmm. um, but it's but to me, it seems loud. That keyboard seemed amazingly loud. Now, it, it's a very different sound also. It's not the click clacky um, that we're no. kind of used to with these keyboards. It's a very yeah. deep I mean, if I type it, right it now, it almost seems artificial, doesn't it? Like, yeah, it almost does. It, I, I thought I almost, could turn it off. Yes, it, it does. Right, I, I, and I would be surprised if you couldn't. In a way, like, um, it doesn't seem like the sound is caused by metal on metal or plastic on metal or whatever you want to say. Like, it's not. I, but I guess it must be, right? It must be. Um, well, you could you could it, actually turn the click off on the MacBook. You, if you if you don't want it to click, you could turn the sound of the click off. You're talking on about the, the on the trackpad. trackpad on the trackpad. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, I, okay, but okay. Now that I've spent 15, 20 minutes ragging on this thing, I, let me say this: I, I was surprised by how good the typing experience was on that thing. I really liked it, and there's something interesting going on there where um, Apple, on a number of devices now, is emulating the feel and even like, like the sound of real world objects like a, a mechanical objects through uh, technology. So the home button, for example, on the iPhone 7 is like that. It's not a real button, but you it press it, it and there's a little haptic effect. And it doesn't, it doesn't emulate exactly the previous iPhone buttons, right? If you have an iPad, like the iPad you have, for example, I don't think that, well, maybe the iPad you have does do this. But most iPads what? don't, most iPhones don't. It's a normal button press. It, it physically pushes in that you feel it kind of click. You know, I don't know if it hits on the bottom or something. This one doesn't feel like that. Here's what's goofy. It feels better, <laughs> right? I actually prefer this. Once I once you use this, it's hard to go back to another eye device that doesn't have it. And I got to so, say, I had this conversation with the guy from CNET uh, a couple of weeks ago. I was talking about how much he liked the keyboard. And I was like, really? I said, I've heard from most people that it's terrible. And he's like, no, no, this, he goes, they really got it right this time. And I, I, I only used it for a little while. I mean, I, I'm just speaking out of turn here in a way, but 
it wouldn't surprise me, like if you use this device primarily going forward, not only do I, I think you will get used to it because I, I know you will, but I think you will grow to prefer it. And and uh, I don't. I'm already having adjustment issues when I go back to the 13 inch, the previous generation 13 inch. Yeah. Um, I'm having like a little bit of an adjustment. You're hitting the buttons really far. Like it probably feels right. Well, you know what? I know it's it's the looseness of the the, well, the yeah. previous key uh, okay. buttons. You know, like it's a little loose. Kinda? Yeah, it's a little wobbly. It's interesting. Listen, it's very I, interesting. It is very interesting, and 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 I got to give them some credit for this because uh, in the pre if you consider like the island style keyboard. That is what you're talking about on your MacBook 13 inch, right? Um, Apple did not invent that. They popularized it, right? So when they came out with, uh, I don't know if it was the original MacBook Air or the one that everyone's been using ever since, like the second version of the MacBook Air. But on whatever product, Apple came out with this island style keyboard. In fact, they use it on their um, uh, PC keyboards, on their, uh, their desktop keyboards as well. Um, before that, Desktop keyboards always had those big, you know, the full-size keys that we associate mm -hmm. with, like the IBM PC from 1981 or whatever. Um, as this kind of keyboard gained in popularity, the companies that made uh, keyboards that were well or well regarded, like, uh, uh, well, it was IBM at the time with ThinkPad, started experimenting with their own style of island-style keys. And, and uh, oh boy, yeah, off the top of my head. So I think the ThinkPad Edge... The original version was an ex an experiment to see whether their customers would accept these different kind of keys. But the goofy thing that happens is when you move to this kind of keyboard, even though it doesn't look like it could possibly be better, it ends up being better than the old style keyboards. And I, I think that Apple this time is doing that again. But this time, I'm not saying they invented this. I don't really know, you know, the the genesis of this kind of technology, but let's say they invented it. They certainly are about to popularize it, I think. I think they're onto something. And so we, yeah, we, we used yeah. to have these big mechanical keys, right, with the, the keycaps, like big keycaps. Like it was like a cone that you would take off of a spring. And then we've moved to these kind of pretty flat, squarish keys, island-style keys, right, meaning there's a separation between each key uh, on the keyboard deck, right? And now we've moved to uh, what do they call these things? Do you even know what they're called? I don't know. Whatever this keyboard type I is. I don't know what I don't know what app. I don't know if Apple has a, a specific name for them. I don't but know what he's, what they're calling them. There, there's stuff going on. Like um, I, I, other companies do this. Uh, HP does this. Dell does this. I'm sure Lenovo does this. Where there, there's some ID, ideal key travel on a traditional laptop keyboard. It's like 1.5 millimeters. And one of the big tricks that they try to do is they use uh, different technologies like force displacement and whatever to make keys that don't travel that much feel like they do. Interesting. And I think Apple has arrived at something that works really, really well. It's interesting to me. I'm always, look, I, I mean, I write for a living. I, I'm always looking for that perfect keyboard experience. Um, I would say on the PC side, like um, Surface Book is right there. That new HP uh, Spectre X, X360, the 15-inch version, is right there. I really feel like they've reached a, a, a an apex almost. And then I used that, and I was like, "Holy crap!" Like I actually yeah. really like this. Like it was kind of a strange moment for me. Um, so because I, uh, what, I, I can't buy one, one; they're too expensive. But one thing that I love on this thing is the actual the touch ID on the Mac. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I've been using it constantly at this point. Right. For mostly for emojis. Which, it, you know, Mostly for emojis, yeah. That's what, that's what I mean. No, I actually no. Well, no, no, I mean the logging in is awesome, right? The right. logging in, yeah. So one of the things uh, I'll, you you know this, I think, because you use a Mac. Um, on the PC, we have a, a variety of ways to log into computers, and all of them are more convenient than typing in a password. Um, I typically will use a PIN on most of my computers, but you have Windows Hello today. You can use a camera, you can use a fingerprint reader if you have that. That's cool. Um, on the Mac, like the the Mac you had before, the one I have now. You have to type in a password, right? Yeah. Or just not have a password. I mean, there's no other way to do it. Well, I'm sorry. Actually, if you have an Apple Watch, you can do a kind of a proximity thing now. But they don't have like pins and they don't have fingerprint readers and stuff not like that. But now, yeah. but now they do. And so yeah. you know from using your device and I know from using an iPhone that that Touch ID sensor is awesome, right? It's awesome. I, it, it's, it's those little things, you know, those little conveniences. Yeah. Now, if we want to, you know, they add that and then they add a gigantic inconvenience and that's taking out USB. 
uh, and going straight to USB type C or Thunderbolt three, whatever they're calling mm -hmm. it. Um, I, I have to tell you that is a tremendous inconvenience. And I, I think the answer here is going to be when it's not an adapter that converts it over, but it's going to be, you know, like a cable that's just USB to USB type C. Like that's going to be our answer, not these multiple plugs. Yeah, actually, you know, yeah, I, I, um, I sort of, I go back and forth in this one. Um, I will say the fact that your your computer has four USB C ports on it, right? Yeah, yeah, and it has a headphone uh, jack. <laughs> it has a headphone jack, yeah. um, which I was really surprised about. <laughs> you you almost don't need four ports, right? I mean, it would no, almost you need be four better because you're covering one. If you get one of these, like like the one that I have, like one of these. Yeah, I don't know if you could see. Oh, that I see. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. You well, know, yeah, okay. I, but you I bought mean, a very specific thing. I mean, um, yeah. here, let me let me unplug. Let me just show you the thing. I, I when I travel, there's a couple of things I always bring with me as kind of a nicety, right? And so um, this is a USB-C version of just a little, um, you know, th it's got three or four, I guess, three yeah. USB. You know, that actually, a. that makes more sense. That actually yeah, makes but, more sense. But it also has, on the end, a, an Ethernet. Ethernet jack, right? Yeah. And you can, of course, get versions of this that have video and whatever. But um, for many years, I still have over my bag, like, the, the normal USB version of this device, and now, because a lot of the devices I travel with have USB-C, I have this version of it. And uh, but you know, here's the thing: the the truth is, I don't actually need it that much. You know, um, I well, really don't. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you something. I I needed it to connect my microphone. I mean, for me, listen, most people are not connecting microphones and webcams. You know, they're going to use the webcam that their laptop comes from. Especially if you have a Mac, you're going to use you know the eyesight camera, whatever the FaceTime camera now. Um, but I, you know, I, I needed this to connect my camera to and my microphone to. And then I realized that I can't, it doesn't have pass through audio. So I can't hear my audio through my microphone because I could connect my mic through here. My, my headphone jack, uh, my headphone through the mic and it doesn't work. So it's yeah, little yeah. things like that that we're going to see happening now. Um, you know, I, I connect it to the computer and it's fine, but it, this is going to be an adjustment. This is a long-term investment. This is going to be a major pain in the butt for a lot of people until all these makers start supplying you with the proper cable. Yeah. So, I yes. Um, I sort of feel like uh, the Mac audience is the right audience to do this first because they tend to be a little more on the leading edge. Are they, are they in the leading edge? Yeah, they are. No, I think they are. By and large. I mean, you know, I don't mean 201, but um, yeah. uh, you're a special case, although you could almost make the argument that any pro user, any pro customer on the Apple side is going to buy a pro device yeah. like you is a special case in the sense that you have very specific sure. needs. And so there are photographers out in the field who expect to have a card reader and they're not getting it. And plugging something into a port that's dangling off the side is not the answer they're looking for. It, it's not efficient. Yeah. It's not elegant, et cetera. And I, I do understand that. And, and I feel like I, the truth is I, I probably have 20 laptops in this room that you can see around me. Every mm -hmm. single one of them probably has some kind of a micro SD port or something. Yeah. I never use that for anything ever, not once. Like never. And see, I but use it every day. And I use right, mine I every say, day. But that's just, yeah. right. But that's just me. And so these... Um, Oh man, I just got the greatest news of all time. Can you say it? A, a, yeah, a weekly team meeting has been canceled, which was going to happen this <laughs> afternoon. So that's great. I can't, I can't, the only good thing about meetings is when they get canceled. I'll tell you, so, Paul. I'm looking a little old in the face. Can we just can we just comment about this? Look at these wrinkles I'm getting. Yeah, you know what, what that? that is, though. You know what it is. What is that? It was Tuesday. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> I'll tell you what. Uh, I'm being I'm giving the high sign here. This is a great time to talk about an ad. Uh, before I forget to do that, <laughs> yes, um, please my do. boss here is telling me, he goes, maybe it's time for a commercial, Andrew. Yes, it is. Uh, we're going to talk about Casper mattresses, Casper.com. Guys, I've been talk I've been talking about Casper for years, like just like Hover. It's amazing. Paul, all these advertisers, they end up sticking with us. I don't know why. <laughs> they wow. end up staying <laughs> uh, with Casper. Here's a great thing. I've been sleeping on a Casper mattress for almost two years now. Paul has a Casper mattress and many, many, many of our viewers have a Casper mattress. Uh, my mother-in-law had bought a Casper. My wife's aunt bought a Casper. I just bought one for my father. I bought one for my brother because um, they're doing some remodeling for them. Um, it's amazing how comfortable these mattresses are. 
how inexpensive they are when you compare it to other premium mattresses. And you get free delivery. The thing comes in a box. I had to move, Paul, I had to move a mattress to the attic, okay? I had a queen size, like this gigantic queen size mattress that I gave to somebody. And I had to move it to their attic. I could not move this thing to their attic. It was impossible. It, it would just not go. You know what I did? He, he goes, you know what? Forget it, Andrew. What's that mattress you guys talk about? I said, Casper. He used the offer code. He got $50 off towards his purchase. He bought this beautiful king size mattress for his attic because he has this nice attic up there. And it comes in a box. He just took the box. He opened it up. He set it up. Boom. Done. He didn't have to worry about bringing it. If, you're, if you live in an apartment like many, many people do in New York or a major city, this is the best way to do it. You don't have to hire a moving company to bring it in. You get the mattress, comes in a box, you open it up, it opens up, and it's perfectly, perfectly fine. It, it's, it's one thing to think about getting a mattress in a box. It's another one to actually sleep on it and realize how great this mattress is. And I would not tell you guys this if it was not good. I was a little apprehensive when I first got the thing, and I, and I said, you know what, how good could it be? It is the best mattress I've ever slept on. And you could try it out too. You get 100 nights uh, free to sleep on this thing if you uh, for a trial period. Uh, you purchase the mattress, you sleep on it, painless returns within a 100-day period. If it's not for you, it's not for you. You could just send it right back. And you get $50 off when you go to casper.com slash Andrew. Terms and conditions obviously do apply here. Uh, but they have a whole list of other things. They have um, bedding now. They sell foundations for the bed. This company has grown – Unbelievably, you go to the subway here in New York City, which I'm riding all the time now, uh, covered in Casper Rats. So it's amazing to see a company grow to this level. Casper.com slash Andrew. Get $50 towards any mattress purchase by going to Casper.com slash Andrew. I want to thank them for supporting the show. See, I like talking about Casper. It's easy. <laughs> it's it's always easy nice when you can – if you have to do advertising, right? It's stuff you actually use and like. That really helps. We have a we have another ad that's starting out soon, and it's mm -hmm. for a uh, a suitcase company, and mm -hmm. they make high tech suitcases for tech devices. You know where you could you know they 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 they're it's very obviously critical sturdy. that I get whatever you're talking about right now. Oh, by the way, they're sending you one. <laughs> I, I I had to tell you that, but it's unbelievable Absolutely actually. Critical. Yeah, it's actually great, um, and we're going to talk about it in the coming weeks. But okay. uh, you know, they sent it to me, and I love it because I've been lugging this thing around. I had to bring a bunch of equipment. I didn't use it to travel, but I had to bring a bunch of equipment here to the city. And it was unbelievable how easy it was. And this thing is like a rock. So we'll talk about that next week. Um, before we run out of time, because we were going to do yep. a little quick show today, because I'm not in my studio. Uh, I'm in right. I'm in an office here in the city. I'm actually no. I'm in I'm in the men's room at at the garden. <laughs> right, this is where I work. This is what I've been telling my wife for all these months now. I've been going to the city. I just go and I hang out in the men's room, just sit there on the floor with my laptop, my MacBook. Which, by sure. the way, I put seen. like a little jar on the floor, and maybe occasionally <laughs> people throw change at you yeah. or whatever. Need need to buy apparel for my Mac, please. Forty five dollars later, I bought a goddamn second dongle. child's on the way. Second child's on the way. Um, please think of the children. <laughs> oh, you know what? That's what they should fund the Patreon. Think of my kids. I need diapers. <laughs> Patreon.com slash what the tech guys. Um, let's talk about the S8. Yeah. For all those people that said, eh, it just looks like the S7. Eh, it's just a small oh, upgrade. You right. know what? This is a significant upgrade. They, they've done a very good job with this. So we'll see what happens with this, by the way. But I actually did pre-order one already. You did? Yeah. I'm, I'm a, uh, how much did it cost? Oh, uh, $850. There's only one configuration, right? So it's in the United States. 64 gigs. You can choose between uh, two or three color choices. We don't get all the color choices here in the U.S. I think blue. And it has uh, – I, I I was so out of it yesterday. It has an SD, um, micro SD slot, right? Yes, it does, which, by the way, okay. is huge for me. Um, so that's great. I mean, that's that's been one of the many issues that I have um, – with the Google Pixel XL, it doesn't have expansion, right? So I only I got the cheap one because I'm an idiot. It only has 32 gigs of storage. That's not enough. I wish I could have done that again, but you know whatever. Um, yeah, so this one comes with uh, 64 out of the box. That's the only configuration. You, you can't pay more to get more storage, but you can get micro. Spend 100 bucks, get a 256 micro SD on that thing, and now you have over 300 gigs. Yeah, I mean, you'll be good for quite a while. Ever. It's a super yeah. um, wide screen. It's tall in portrait mode, obviously, because it's a phone, because it, it has almost no bezel on this. Well, it has no bezel. It's the curved screen like the one you have. And then yeah. it's got a much smaller bezel on the top and the bottom. And so I don't remember the exact aspect ratio, but I want to say it's 18.5 by 9. 
So if you think about like a widescreen movie, like if you go to the theater, what is it? Eighteen point five by nine. I think so. Yeah. So a widescreen movie is sixteen by nine. And yeah. So this thing is a little wider still, and of course, when you do it this way, uh, you know, we've talked about this with computers. It's not as obvious on phones, but it it even yeah. seems to stretch out a little bit further. Uh, and so that's interesting. Um, it's all high end spec stuff, four gigs of RAM, uh, Snapdragon eight thirty five. It's got the same camera that's in your phone. Uh, in, on the back, so 12 megapixels, um, optical image stabilization. Samsung claims the software is a little bit better, but you know what? You know this from your experience with that phone. Who cares? That's yeah. a great camera. Um, the selfie camera is better, but I, you know, I don't personally care about that too much. Um, I think the style of it is beautiful. Um, it's expensive. You know, it's a flagship phone. Uh, there's some interest, we'll have to see how this works in real life, but it does uh, a Windows Hello type thing where you can do optical image, what do you call it, optical re recognition, facial recognition. So you can sign in onto the phone. All the tests I've seen so far make it look like it's very fast. The home button, is it the home button? The home button slash fingerprint you know, reader kind of thing, or actually built under the screen. And so you go through the screen and we'll see if uh, Samsung is as good at, at uh, Apple as at making that kind of thing work. Um, I don't know that anyone caught this, by the way, but there was yeah. a, a small announcement on the Google Android developer blog yesterday saying, by the way, na app, or Android natively supports these ultra-wide screens. Yeah. And if you as an Android developer want to specifically support the Samsung phones, you could do so very easily. And it's not something that requires some new version of Android or whatever. Like It's, it's kind of built in. Um, so we'll see. I think um, I'm going to, because I'm up for an upgrade on my phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think I'm going to upgrade because, by the way, I have the S7 and I had the S6 also, which I actually have here also. Um, mm. I have to tell you, the I've... S6 for me was more Probably. of a stable phone than the S7. Oh, okay. Interesting. I, I, I did not, I had a lot of problems with the S7. The battery life is atrocious on this thing. Yep. Um, yep. It's always been bad. The camera is not that great. Uh, it was not oh, a major improvement. Over the S6, okay. yep. um, I actually take photos with the S6, and I sometimes feel that it performs better in low light settings than oh, the it's S7. Like me with the iPhone. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. They so both let me throw out a the theory. Let me throw out a theory for you with regards to like uh, general phone quality, right? Um, buying a Samsung right now would be like going to Jack in the Box after they poison some people. It's probably <laughs> the safest thing on earth to do right now, because those yeah, guys are. Yeah. In a, you know what I mean? They're going to be super they careful to this time to make bar. sure it's right. You know, the phone that you have, the S7, is the battery enclosed or is it something you can take out? No, you can't take out. No more. That's over. Yeah. Okay. So I know the S8 is like that. Um, the other thing is, I, I, and maybe you know this off the top of your head, I didn't see any notation to this effect. But when you buy the phone directly from Samsung, you can choose which carrier you're going to use. And, I, you know, I chose AT&T. That makes me a little nervous because they don't. What that means is they don't really have a universal. Well, it might not mean this, but it suggests they don't have it one truly universal device. Like I'd almost wish that this thing was universal and would work anywhere. More to the point, I wish it was completely unlocked. But I assume if I'm buying it outright, that I mean, AT and T would. It can't be locked to the carrier, right? Could it? I mean, this must be. It must be unlocked. I'm buying it. It it, it has to be unlocked. Yeah. It has if to if be, they're going right? to supply yeah. it on multiple carriers, yeah, you could bring it to wherever you want. Okay. What I want to be able to do is, uh, although I guess these days it's becoming less crucial, but it'd be nice if I could bring it to Europe and, um, you know, put a SIM in it or whatever and just use it that way. Yeah, I'm very interested in it. So I'm definitely going to order it um, and replace yep. this S7 and, and, you know, throw it in the trash because it was absolutely terrible. And, you know, I didn't when I first got uh, it, they weren't used to this curved display. So, like, I, I cracked the screen immediately and they wanted three hundred and fifty dollars yeah. to fix it. And sure. it was a whole scenario. So um, I'm, I'm nothing. to buy new pants. Uh, and so are you it's because so it's so it's so tall. It's going to be hanging well, out the front of your pants. Is it bigger than this? Yeah, it's dude. This is really tall. Oh, that's the really? other thing. So. Very unique to this design, um, aside from the, the aspect ratio of the screen, is the size of the screen. So the, there's two versions. There's an S8 and an S8 Plus. The S8 is a 5.8-inch device. That's really big. That's pretty much where phablets are maxing out these days. But the bigger one, and there is a bigger one, the Plus, is 6.2 inches. And so that's even bigger than like a Motorola 6. It's bigger than that uh, Lumia 1520 that was out a few years ago. 
Those were six inch so wait, devices. It, the, the regular one, what's the screen size? How big is the regular S8? 5.8. And what's yeah, the, they're, the plus? They're big. These are really big. 6.2. These are very big devices. Like they, they've really gone all in on big. Like they're not doing a little one. So, I mean, obviously Samsung has other phones for that. But I was, my wife has been stuck on her Note 4, which is two versions old, right? And so they made a Note 5, which she was, didn't qualify for because it was a year later. Then they came mm -hmm. out with the Note 7, which, of course, explodes, and they don't sell anymore. Yeah, but yeah, now yeah. she's kind of stuck. And so I told her about this, and I said, you know, because she's kind of up for her upgrade, and like you are. And I said, you, might, you really might want to get this. She really likes the bigger phones. She never uses the little pen, which I think is essentially the differentiator between a Note and an S. By the way, and, if you uh, could get an S7, you could get it. What is it, the S? I'm sorry, not the S7. The uh, the Note uh, Note 7, right? Well, you can get a refurbished one, maybe. Refurbed. But, um, <laughs> no, she's no, she's not getting it. No, 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 no. no. Do you want so to maybe she gets is this. your insurance I, gonna is your is your homeowner's yeah, yeah, insurance yeah. gonna cancel? You should get one of those. This is the airline's problem now, Andrew. I'm not yeah. gonna worry about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm curious about this phone because it looks great and you know um the it iphone does. whatever the next version is going to be called is pr most likely going to that curve you know glass to, you know edge to edge mm -hmm. display mm -hmm. and uh you know that i mean i very I much prefer next, ios I, I i really do but yeah. i i and i very much on the android side if i have to use android i mean what i want is that kind of pure android experience and i'm so telling you I Paul, know, you may you may really enjoy this because yeah. I was one of those that wanted the pure Android experience, the pure Google experience, and I totally changed my tune on this. But you can, uh, you know this. I mean, you even know this. You can, you can put like the Google launcher on this thing, can't you? If you don't want to, you know, you could, you, you could. But I, I actually don't dislike the launcher. I don't dislike yeah. what Samsung has done with this version. No, I mean, I'll so try, for I'll, me, I'll try it. Obviously, I'll try it. But um, okay. I don't Paul, know. I, I, I haven't owned yeah. one of these things in three years. I, I had a Samsung Galaxy S5. Which was the last crappy, you know, S device oh, they made terrible. that was all plastic. It had that that weird dimpled yeah. golf ball plastic back, and it was just so cheap and crappy. You know, it was like plastics that were made to look like metal, but they were just plastics. It was so terrible. So, so before we wrap up, because I gotta, um, I gotta get back to work here. Um, can you you mention? Can you talk about the? Uh, the Microsoft version of this are they going to be selling in the Microsoft Store, which I think is very interesting, and I don't know if that's a good sign for Windows uh, Windows Phone fans. <laughs> well, I, there's no good news for Windows Phone fans. And um, I got an email from Microsoft this morning and explaining this, and I had to go look this up because I had this vague understanding that Microsoft had some agreement with Samsung about putting their apps on their phones. And sure enough, if you go back two years, uh, Samsung and, and Microsoft were involved in a uh, a payment dispute because back before Samsung became the biggest cell phone maker on earth, they agreed to pay uh, basically uh, intellectual property indemnification or patent indemnification to Microsoft because Microsoft owns all these patents that apply to Linux and uh, apply to Android. And uh, it was fine for a couple of years, but then Samsung started selling so many phones that they were spending, they actually were spending over a billion dollars a year paying Microsoft. So they stopped paying Microsoft. <laughs> and basically what they would try to do is reach a, a lower fee or something. And uh, so these guys yeah. went to court. Microsoft had to sue them, and they went to court. So in February 2015, they settled. We don't know the terms of that. I presume Samsung is back to paying Microsoft something. But as part of the deal, Samsung agreed to join a group of other Android handset and device makers who are bundling Microsoft apps on their devices. And actually the first device that went out the door I think from Samsung was the Samsung Galaxy S6 from two years ago. Had a couple of uh, Microsoft uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneDrive, and probably OneNote, something like that. Skype, maybe. I don't know. Um, and I, I haven't paid attention to what you get on Samsung devices since then. I don't really know. I don't know if it's all devices. Some devices, I have no idea. Anyway, so I get this note today, and it says, hey, I uh, just want to let you know, Microsoft, through their retail stores, meaning not online, but in the physical stores in the United States, will be selling the Samsung Galaxy S8. And Very interesting. Yeah. But here's how this works. And uh, now part of this is, uh, is me reading into this a little bit, but let me tell you exactly what they said. Um, th the software is not going to be on the phone. So it's going to be everything I just said plus one, uh, sorry, Outlook. Um, and so it's, it's a full suite of Microsoft apps, right? The apps are not on the phone. But as part of the buying experience, you'll open up the box in the store, You'll connect to the Wi-Fi in the Microsoft Store. 
And Microsoft's, their version of the Genius Bar, whatever they call it, Answer Desk or whatever, will walk you through the setup of the phone. And at that time, those apps will be downloaded to your phone. And this is, this is what I think based on what I just said. But See, what I, I just would, said is what I would they, really like it. I would really like to go in there, buy it with the Microsoft you know, launcher and the Microsoft apps, and that's it. I don't think it's that stuff, right? I, they, they're they not going to, Samsung's not going to let them contort the phone like that. But here's the Two thing Two years free of Office. Well, yeah, okay. I, I don't know. But I think you're just getting apps. I, I honestly I don't think you're getting anything more from Microsoft than you could just download from the web or from the Play Store for free. But but here's the thing. I actually think the thing that causes those downloads to happen is that you're connecting to the Microsoft Store Wi Fi. I don't think that yeah. that box that contains the phone is any different than the box that Samsung is sending to Best Buy, to Verizon, to wherever, wherever's gonna sell Costco, wherever sells these devices. I think it literally is tied to the Microsoft Store Wi-Fi. I think you could buy this phone at Costco, not open it up, bring it to the Microsoft Store, inside the store, open it up, connect to their Wi-Fi, and I think the same thing will happen. I think that's oh, all it is. So yeah. we'll find and out gonna, when I get mine. Gonna, I am going to find out. So on April 21st, I'm, that's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to bring it to the Microsoft Store. Are you coming I, to New York? I think York that's Park? how it's going to work. What's that? No, I'll go to the one in Boston. But I mean, okay. okay, cool. Excellent. Um, Excellent. Yeah. Paul, so it is very it is getting loud in here and it's I gotta go. Yeah, I can hear the toilets flushing. Um yeah, the toilets are flushing. The jan is coming in. Yeah. <laughs> All right. There's a that's a basketball game happening tonight. So <laughs> yeah. I gotta go. I gotta go and uh, clean up here. Uh sorry guys for the last minute change to the schedule, but next week we're back to normal. We're gonna do the show from the studio. Everything's back to normal next week. Uh Paul, thank you for being patient with me. No problem. Are you it was wonderful seeing you and Mary Jo. Change your schedule for me, so no worries. I'll there. always change it for you, so we'll do that. Okay. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Um, I know we'll continue this, obviously, next week on the show. We'll continue discussing this because um, once, and especially when we get the device in our hands, it'll be a lot of fun to talk about. Yeah. We'll see you all next week. Take care.